I have a dream that the Philippines will be an environmental friendly, environmentally aware country. Do you ever get the feeling that you think you're doing something right, and then you meet somebody else who kind of puts you to shame? I thought I was pretty green. I do my part, I watch my water, I take public transport. But when I met Denise, she really showed me what it means to be green by making her recycled paper. I'm trying to make it as environmental friendly as possible. So the only part when I use electricity, supposedly, is the blender part. With that paper smoothie, Denise is turning trash into cash. She's hoping it's a recipe for success. The ingredients are scraps of paper, some water, and a few tools to make stationery with a story. I've been fascinated with paper since I was a kid. And... I think it started with something like we were forced to actually save up on electricity, water, for economic benefits. Yeah. You save money and then you save the environment and then, wow, it's for someone, for, for a kid. I think it's something worthwhile to know. Now Denise is turning the page. At 25 years old, Denise is an environmental entrepreneur and founder of the Green Itch Project. Green Itch is more like our itch to be green in everyday living. So paper is something that we cannot do away with. You know, like every day you need to write on something, even the receipts, the checks, even money is made from paper. So something that we cannot do away with. And why not do it in a, you know, make some green paper. So this is the one that filters the water out. It may come naturally to Denise, but overall recycling rates in the Philippines are low. The city of Manila produces 5,000 tons of trash a day. It all ends up at the dump sites, which are filling up too fast. All you have to do is look outside to see the pollution. But environmental initiatives just haven't caught on. People are more focused on poverty. I heard from someone, from a poor person. How can we think about the environment when we're hungry, like our stomachs are empty? Denise wants her paper to prove being green can actually be profitable and that ignoring climate change has a high cost. Just last September, a super typhoon ripped through Manila. A month's worth of rain fell in six hours, causing widespread flooding and damage. And storms like that are becoming more common. This house also was submerged in water for like up to, I don't know how many feet, probably 10 to... 12 feet. People know climate change on a personal level, not just on, like, theoretically, climate change will bring this and that. I mean, probably other countries know climate change on that level, but for us, it's like, we have a personal connection to it. Denise takes the environment very personally. For her day job, she runs green workshops, teaching children and adults how to manage their waste and be earth-friendly in day-to-day -day life. A lot of people are, like, self-confessed environmentalists, but you don't really see them doing something concrete. It's always important to practice what you preach so that other people will follow. Ah. <laughs> okay. I think this okay. is a lot. This is Friends, family, and colleagues are doing their part, even if it's just giving her leftover piles of paper. Because of this, um, 
more people will be aware that even um, a, little, a little thing such as recycling paper can do a lot. I know I'm planning to buy some of these off of Denise. It's less than a dollar, so all of you friends out there watching, you're going to be getting one of these as a postcard. It didn't take much for Denise to sell me on her paper. I bought four cards. But it's not just about selling something. It's about pushing the boundaries of what it means to be green. Not just a philosophy, but a lifestyle. You know, sustainable development can be a big word, but it's doable. I actually have a pink bike, not because pink is my favorite. I just want to rub it in when I pass somebody, like I, I pass guys in a competition. Hey, I, uh, you know, a pink bike with flowers just passed you <laughs> and you can't do anything about it, so there. Annie DeLeon makes me very proud to wear pink. <laughs> I met Annie this week in Manila. It's probably the most physically demanding story I've ever done, but that's what happens when you try and chase down a triathlete. I do it for myself, obviously, but a big part of it is it's just a privilege to to race for the Philippines. It's the Iron Man trophy. <laughs> At 35 years old, Annie is an icon in Asia's racing circuit. Her resume is just stacked with athletic achievement. Now she's a role model for up-and-coming female athletes. All this 14 years after Annie started training in college. She'd spend her spare time at the pool while studying to become an artist. I, I really didn't like it at first because it was so hard. I didn't realize you had to train for it. Because <laughs> I, I, I thought, okay, I know how to swim. And then I, uh, I, I still know how to bike from when I was a kid. And then I guess I could run. She guessed right. Annie started winning local races and her hobby became an obsession. Then a few years of training and she realized her new dream, to become a professional triathlete. Then I, I realized, hey, maybe, maybe I can be good at this. But who would help her to the finish line? Triathletes and trainers were scarce in the Philippines, especially for women. Annie struggled to find coaches. Often she just trained on her own. Finally, at 24 years old, Annie made the Philippines national team. She was the first Filipino to qualify for Ironman Hawaii. It's pretty much the toughest competition on the planet. A grueling 226 kilometer race. Annie swam, ran, and biked her way to the finish line in 12 hours. You know, when I crossed the finish line, I was crying. And after all the years of hard work, it's just, uh, it's just an amazing feeling. Finally at the top of her game, Annie decided it was time to clear the road for future female athletes. She founded Penai in Action. It's a fitness program for women and girls in the Philippines, known as Penai's. Annie coaches kids and hosts women's racing clinics, all part of a growing trend to push Penai's into sports in a country of gender stereotypes. We're not encouraged uh, growing up here. We're not encouraged to get into sports, not as much as the boys are. People just don't automatically assume that, hey, a girl could be good at sports. Now those stereotypes are finally breaking down. Hundreds of women and girls are enrolled in Annie's programs, leading a pink power movement. You don't realize it. You're inspiring the little girls. And then now, now that, they're, uh, that they have their own races to, to join, there are so many more girls now. I, I remember my first competition, we were 14 girls. That, that was it. The wheels are the same, but yours is bigger. Yeah, when you get bigger, you'll have a bigger pink bike. After seeing all these adorable little girls with their pink bikes, just like their coach Annie, it kind of makes me want to get one. Though I'm pretty sure I could never actually compete in a triathlon. Then again, Annie felt the same when she first hit the road. I didn't become like this overnight. <laughs> Take baby steps and then overcome each challenge, overcome each goal. Before you know it, you, you've done so many amazing things along the way.